everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and I want to welcome all you shed files out there. Yes, I said shed files. Welcome back to Big Bag of Blades 3 Chopocalypse. This is the third chapter. Now, in the last chapter, we finished strong with a budget blade from Schrade, and that means it's time to bring back something premium. I don't think I did, nope. I haven't done one of the uh, Bark River since the first chapter, so we're going to start with a Bark River. Now, this one was sent to me by Mike Stewart, who's pretty much taken over the role of mentor for me in teaching me a bunch of things about knife design and steels and things like that. And he really wanted me to try this one because of some of the designs that I'm currently working on. This is a, a large chopping knife that is specifically designed for chopping. And it is called the Bark River Dakar. Now I cannot give you the history lesson on this design. It's been, you know, this type of design has been around for a long time. Even the sheath, which I do not have with me, uh, the Bark River sheath for this is based on the original design's sheath. This one is A2 tool steel. It is a full convex grind. And it chops. All right, let's start with the uh, big stuff. See how we do it, like a 10 chop test. Don't know what this wood is. All I know is that it's hard as hell. Because this is a slick handle, I'm gonna use my mechanics grip gloves. Because I'm told I'm not allowed to wrap Bark River handles by somebody in the Bark River forum. Oh well, I like to break rules. Yeah! See those chips flying? That's why I had to go over and get my glasses. So, that is pretty impressive. Let's do another 10 chops. So really doing the damage on this. Of course, we're not gonna use something like this to chop down a, a small tree. So let's try some smaller stuff. All right, let's make one small down tree into a bunch of little sticks. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, I'm about, uh, what time is it? I'm about four hours into filming Big Bag of Blades 3 Chopocalypse. And all I can say is if I was a single guy, that lived alone at home, there would be no possibility of romance tonight if you get my drift. So let's get going on this. As we get closer to the base, we're getting thicker. where we get to the part where we need more than one chop. Uh, get off of there. This thing is a freaking hell cleaver. I mean, look at that. That's one tiny little swing. This thing chops wood, no doubt about it. So there you go with the uh, Bark River Dakar. A lot of chopping power in a small package. You know, that almost like cleaver style blade with that full convex grind. It, it definitely bites deep. So I'll be doing some more with this here later on on my channel. 
But for right now, only closing comment, I will leave you on this blade. I think this is the first bare metal A2 blade that I've done in this series. So one thing with A2, same thing if you are if you own a Bush Bat or a JX6 Companion, you got to take care of it. A, A2, O1, uh, if it's a bare steel, you definitely want to keep some sort of protectant on it, a little bit of oil. Uh, Bark River, they generally recommend, they use 5W30 on the blades when they ship them. Uh, it's done the best on the tests that they've done as far as oiling them up, leaving them out, exposed. So that's a good inexpensive uh, solution if you're not using it for like food prep or anything like that. Yeah, definitely a cool blade. And this blade, this grind, this geometry is going it is influencing the uh, JX5 Vengeful 1 which if you guys could quit humping Peter Kohler's leg for two seconds maybe he could get that done so <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be a joint project between the two of us all right let's go grab a budget knife off the log and get started with that all right apparently I lost count so I'm about to squeeze this segment in between the two I just shot and then I think I'm going to be done for the day. But we're not going to be done with the Chopocalypse. We're going to have about uh, two more episodes after this one. So the one that I'm going to squeeze in here is the newest one to me out of everything here. I was looking for a couple last minute additions for the Chopocalypse and I was wondering what I'd been missing. This blade has been around for a while couple years actually and I think what it was was when it first came out my tastes were just a little bit different I didn't respect the recurve all that much in fact I didn't like it at all and I have since changed and gotten better at uh, my sharpening methods for those types of blades so what I'm talking about here and this is the first time this brand has shown up in this series is the Kershaw Camp 10 I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this blade and it has been reviewed many times on YouTube because like I said, it's not new. But in the time since this has been out, if I'm not mistaken, which I'll have to check on this, I think this is 65 MN steel off the top of my head. And if I'm right, if I'm not, I'll put what it actually is on the screen. Uh, that's a pretty decent steel for this application. Now this is a smallish chopper, under 50 bucks. I can see by the design where it could be called into doing some finer tasks. Has an extremely grippy handle. Now I think another reason why I would never went back and tried this out is Probably two, two and a half years ago, I reviewed the Camp 14. And that's when I was in my phase where I had to strip everything and polish it. And I stripped the Camp 14 and blued it. But no matter what, after I stripped it, it just kept getting surface rust and surface rust and surface rust. And it just drove me freaking nuts and ended up pitching it. So I will not be stripping this one. But this appears to be a really good light chopper just using my eyeballs analyzing the design so let's go try it out all right let's come back over here i believe this is where we were uh, chopping with the super kook i don't think i was in the last episode all right first time ever using the kershaw camp 10. Right off the bat, I can tell you that although that handle is really secure, it's a little too grippy for my taste for chopping comfort. So I'm gonna go ahead and glove up. Let's keep going. Now this 
you know, grippy gloves combined with grippy handle. Okay, now we're talking some real security. I should also point out that I did not work sharp this. Right now I'm using the factory edge. Of course I will. But every once in a while I try to do what people want. It's definitely chopping. I don't think it's really blowing out pieces to where you can really see it. Maybe this isn't the, the best piece of wood to try this with. Let me find another one. So this is a pretty good size piece of wood. And I'm just going to use the part that we just chopped as the place to brace it. It's definitely doing, doing a number on it. Getting a little bit thicker here. Definitely bit. What is this devil wood? I'm in Australia or something. I can see it biting. It ain't the edge. It's just, well, I think this is all ash or something. It's like some Satan wood. All right, I need something softer. Right. Over here, the chopping block here. Definitely good bite. It's sticking just about every time. It's doing the damage. So I'm not exactly sure how that last sequence was going to end up looking on video. I still am liking this. It's just, a lot of it has to do with I'm like on hour six of Big Bag of Blades three. And at this point, my arm and my hand is completely wrecked. So I'm not gonna be finishing Big Bag of Blades three today. But for this, yeah, yeah, I'm going to save a lot of my, I want to give a lot of thoughts about this, but, you know, these are short sequences. I will do a full review of this, doing a lot of stuff, you know, after tweak the edge and, and all that. So I will do a full-blown review of this knife. I think this has a lot of potential. Handles a little bit uh, overly grippy for my tastes, uh, for a lot of chopping use. Definitely more comfortable with gloves but at this point I can I can barely freaking grip the thing so I'm wrecked you know, I just I just chopped through freaking nine different freaking knives but as a budget blade in the large camp knife category under 50 bucks I think this is definitely worth looking at and even though when I originally saw this I wasn't that into you know, the, the, the sheath, the way it is, it, it does make it very easy 
to sheath the knife after you get done using it. You don't have to weasel it in there or anything like that. It just goes in very easily. So yeah, we will definitely come back to this blade again. All right, so back to a budget blade. Now this one is a little bit different. See, I haven't been showing you the sheaths and stuff for Big Bag of Blades 3, but in this case, I want to. Uh, this is a blade that I did my initial impressions review on probably about a week or so ago, and I liked it so much, and I put it on the Jessica list that I immediately got it kydexed. Now, this is the Condor Eco Go Lock. And I go to one specific Kydexer for these kinds of sheaths, and that is uh, AZ Welke. So I'll have a link to him in the description box below. And generally speaking, when I have him do a, a budget type of sheath, like I, I have had him do with the Bushcraft Parang and stuff like that before, I will buy him one so he has one in stock and then anybody else that wants to order one, they don't have to send theirs in. So I told him I wanted one, it was mostly open here, so I could draw it the way that I detailed when I did the review on this blade. Just gotta be careful with the retention strap. And it just makes drawing it a lot easier than the stock sheath that you gotta kinda wiggle it around and all that. I had him make this one as a pack mount, so he's got some staggered molly clips. But we're not here to look at the sheath. If you're interested in the sheath, like I said, link link is in the description box below. We're here for the Chopocalypse. Now I have uh, touched this edge up a bit since I used it, you know, a week or so ago. So it is a tad bit sharper. We're going to do like we have been doing. Let's start with some heavy chopping and then go into something a little bit more realistic. Okay, we're going to go to the far extreme end of the unrealistic scale for something that you would normally do with this blade. Uh, this is the location that we filmed the Silky uh, Sugo Waza saw video. And this is that extremely hard piece of seasoned ash that we drug over here. So let's whale on this thing a little bit and see how a light, almost machete style chopper can fare against it. Can you hear that? That is by far the loudest sound any of my chops have made today. That's how freaking hard this stuff is. That just about wrecked my arm. But let's look at what the blade did. Still, even though this is not meant for heavy wood chopping, this thing still did a number on this wood. So. Pretty impressive. Did it do anything to the edge? Hell no. So let's keep moving. Now let's do the fast uh, kindling test on this. Getting a little thicker. Going right through it, burying it in the stump. Cleaving through that. Not a problem. All right, let's just do some random targets of opportunity from this big down tree here. Definitely don't need it.
Yeah, I might have touched up the edge just a hair. Just a tiny bit. Well, let's just finish up here. This stump. She's chopping. My arm is going to be wrecked tonight. We're just finishing up uh, video three. So here we go. Condor Eco Go Lock. Still loving it. Loving it even a little bit more after I tweaked the edge using the, uh, the Ken Onion Work Sharp with the blade grinder attachment. It's just a good design. Talking about the geometry. So we got. Like I showed in the original video, so if we got the ha the handle horizontal, that downward angle just means you're going to get a more efficient chop. You're going to get more power out of this lighter blade just because of the way that it's designed. So I am definitely liking it. And although definitely cannot complain about the sheath that is provided with this blade. I really, really like it that much more with the AZ Welke aftermarket Kydex. So this will just be one more pack mountable option that I have. I do have uh, two of my Jess X sheaths have the Molly clips on it, so they can be pack mounted as well. I can't get this with my freaking gloves on. But it's a good budget blade. What's nice about some of these budget blades, you know, like the Condor Parangs and the Golocks and, you know, stuff like that, is the tools are proven to last a long, long time. So you don't invest that much in the tool and it makes, at that point, it kind of makes sense to splurge a little bit for the one that you really like and get a good aftermarket Kydex sheath with it. So... Links to him will be in the description box below. Links and extra information for the three blades that we covered in this episode will be in the description box below. I'm Chris from Prepared My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. And I think I have enough gas in me to squeeze out one more episode in this series today. And then I'm probably going to have to finish it up back on home turf. 
So several hours of chopping. The only thing I've had today was a protein shake in the morning. It's already three o'clock. Yeah, I'm running out of gas. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.